So as we were stating further or before, a lot of things that Satan devised that are in the world are psychological mind games. A lot of things we feel like that we ascribe to get and we look to actually achieve is actually a mirage. It's similar to how you watch those cartoons and you know you might watch Bugs Bunny as you're you know growing up and he might be in a desert and at the end of the desert they see a pool of water and, and a turkey. Then he get there and there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that's what happens when we try to reach the things that the world gives us instead of reaching for the things that the Most High promised us. So with that, the title of the lesson is Stop Playing Satan's Mind Games. So I'm going to go into the commentary and go right into the scripture. There are many twists and turns you will encounter in the truth when you decide to follow the road of righteousness. One of the biggest things you're going to find is the continuous mind games that are played by Satan and his followers. Oftentimes people get tripped up because they don't see the games due to the carnal side or their carnal side getting in the way. We must learn to identify the games and avoid being manipulated so we don't fall from grace due to our own lack of understanding. So let's go into the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, to get some understanding here. Come on. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it's my people, right? Israel, Yashra Allah, the people of the book, the people that the covenant was given to. A lot of times we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's been so many times that, you know, there's the information, like I, I stated last night when we was in the Bible study, the name Ahia always been there in the Bible. The Strong's Concordance, always, as long as we've been going to church, there have been a Strong's Concordance. So we were right there in front of the truth the entire time, but chose not to, to read it or study it for, for, far enough. Like one of the most important things that have to do with our actual walk with the Most High in Christ is his name. Okay? And you know what? For years, because we didn't read, we said, you know what? It don't matter. He know who I'm talking about. That's disrespectful. That's just like, you know, let, let a husband come home and call his wife another name. Hey, Deborah. Mm. My name to me. What you talking about? <laughs> Who's Deborah? Keep calling Deborah here. I'm locking the doors. Oh, don't matter, babe. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. See, how be it the natural than the spiritual. You would learn in the natural. You would never do that to a person you're sitting before. So why would we ever do that to the Most High? <laughs> Call him somebody else's name. So once we receive the truth and understand, we're responsible for what we know. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Mm. Because that, thou has rejected knowledge, he also will reject us. And a lot of time, that's what we do. We shun knowledge. It don't matter. You know, as long as I believe, as long as I do this, as long as I do that. No. True worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So knowledge is important. Understanding is important. It's paramount. Come on. That thou shalt be no priest to me, mm. seeing thou hast forgotten the law of the Most High. Mm. I will also forget thy children. Mm. Verse 7. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. So we are a stiff-necked people and reject the true knowledge of the laws of the Father. We are open game for Satan and his minions. The more... The blessings are increased the more sinful we became and no longer equated 
our blessings to the Most High. We gave that glory to other gods. Okay? No sooner, we, and that's something we went into last night. No sooner did Moses go up the mount, they just delivered them, okay, from, from, from Pharaoh and all the oppression. The, as soon as he go up the mount, they go and it's calf time. Okay, it's Yahweh time. All right, hey, he's, Moses isn't coming back. He did. Okay, it's been too long. It's been about 35 days, and I ain't seen him. He's not coming back. You hear all that thundering? He went up there to die. Let us build ourselves a calf. Give me the earrings, sis. Give me them gold chains, huh? This is what happened. Okay? Satan understood the way we as a people have reacted to having many things and created a society where we would solely be concerned on how we can gain physical substance. That's what you see out here. It's all about substance and consuming things. Now, we're in Antiquity of the Jews. This is in Josephus here. Book 1, Chapter 4, Paragraph 2. Read. Now, it was Nimrod who, who excited them to such an affront and contempt of the Most High. So it was Nimrod who worked up the crowd into a frenzy. Okay? This is more in, in, information on the Tower of Babel. Right? Check this out now. Come on. He was the grandson of Ham. He was the grandson of who? Of Ham. Of who? Of Ham. Okay. So we know we're dealing with the lineage now of Ham coming down, right? Read. The son of Noah, a bold man. A bold man. Come and on. of great strength of hand. Come on. He persuaded them not to ascribe it to the Most High. Mm. As if it was through his means they were happy. Mm. But to believe that it was their own courage which procured the happiness. So he broke it down with philosophy you understand you, so what did he break it down with so if you want to look at it Nimrod was almost like the first you know African spiritual you know guy with consciousness it wasn't you but the God within you brother it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't this it was your own consciousness that got you to where you at you God huh Forget about that God you praying to. Sound familiar? There's nothing new under the sun. So this is what Nimrod convinced them to do. And notice he fall right into that line. Right? Come on. He also gradually changed the government into tyranny, seeing no other way of turning men from, their, from the fear of the Most High. Exactly, because this is what we say all the time. All this black consciousness and things that we look at within the world that looks clever, what's the law you follow? What's going to govern the people, okay, and keep the people in order? Notice there was no law here, so what did Nimrod had to turn to? Tyranny. If you don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to be killed. Simple. See, when there's no order, Things go all over the place, and it just turns into violence, right, and chaos. Remember, as we was reading, you know, within the scriptural reading, or what we just went over in Sirach 25, when, it, when the love of brethren go out mm -hmm. and order go out, you know who's in the midst of that, huh. Satan. Read. But to bring them into a constant dependence on his power. On his power, right? So... There was tyranny in just dealing with Nimrod solely. So this is what he convinced the people. And notice, whenever you see these people that are out here on YouTube or social media, and they're in that spirit, it's only to gain notoriety for themselves. See, that's in the spirit of Nimrod. Okay? Who did it first? It was only to gain power to himself. Don't deal with the God of Israel. Don't deal with his laws. You know what? Deal with me. Because if you deal with me, I got the answers. Okay? It's already happened in history. 
right? So just like ancient Babylon, the system is set up in modern Babylon in a direct reflection of the mind games that Satan has played over the years to keep us separated from the Father. Welfare and all manners of public assistance seem well-meaning on the surface, but really they were set up that you become servants to the government rather than the Father. Because it's like this, it's one, it's one governmental system and it's one belief and one, you know, you have trust in this system. So if you have trust in the system now, what happens when the market of beasts is instituted? Mm -hmm. It goes from trust to trust. Uh -huh. Like, okay, well, look, this is how I fed my family anyway. Mm -hmm. This is how I'm going to feed my family from the going forward. Okay? So they've set these systems up in the spirit of Nimrod that at the end of the day, you'll be dependent on certain things. And not just what you would see in a man but you notice that all these spirits are all similar. Like if, if Satan's in one thing, it's going to be similar to whatever else he's in. Like the governmental system, i.e. A, a dictator or a so-called black leader. It's all going to be the same. You're going to be self-dependent on that one thing solely. And if you don't have it, what am I going to do? It's, 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 it's something that the Bible calls faith. <laughs> Trusting in the most high is something different, right? So what's, what good is faith if you, if you don't need to exercise it? Because Satan is giving you all the things you need. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. What good is faith? If the most high said, now here's what's interesting, brothers and sisters. If the most high said, with food and raiment, you be content. If he promised that. then what is leaning on a system doing for you? You taking the power away from the most high, okay? For him supplying your needs, from him getting you from one place to the next. Because see, then if you had faith, you would start to see, okay, the most high God is real, something's up. Because I know, Lord knows I ain't got no money. Lord knows I ain't, he, he know. And guess what? You're saying it. Yes, you, know, you hear yourself? Lord knows I ain't got no money. But how? Because he said it. You just got to trust what he says. Okay. That very factor will cause many to take the mark of the beast because they have never had a need to have faith in the Father. Sadly enough, a lot of our people would rather get a little handout from the government than to keep the commandments and to rule the world eventually. Okay? What the government is given is far greater than what the Most High is given. Okay? Sometimes you just got to go out on a limb and say, you know what? I'm trusting in the Father. It's okay. If I fall a little short, and if I fall in need of things, okay, the most high knows what I need. Maybe it's time for me to go on a fast. Maybe it's time, maybe it's time for me to afflict my soul, but I know when the time comes, the most high will provide for me. Now listen, that doesn't come without you making measures and trying to make things work for yourself. That doesn't come with just waiting on the most high. Remember, the kingdom cometh not with observation, but it's within you. So you can't just sit there and say, well, you know what? The most high is going to bless me, and he haven't done anything for me, and all you did was sit on your hands. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you have to do all you can to make sure that, that you're providing, and guess what? The most high will make the increase, similar to how when Elder was breaking down how Christ fed the multitude with the fish. Okay? Breaking it down and really understanding what it was. It was fish soup. Okay, I can make more in a stew. Families know that when you're short on food. 
Okay, well, you, you know, you, you, ain't got, you, got one, you got one steak, right? Mm-hmm. All right? I got, everybody always got potatoes, <laughs> right? Okay, everybody got potatoes. Sometimes they grow them little things on there because you ain't using them. <laughs> everybody got potatoes, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got a little water. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got, you got some salt. Okay, you got yourself a stew here. Uh-huh. And about two or three days worth of food, right? But it's like this. Instead of us being thankful for what we have, because of the B system and what they show, keep in mind, that's a trick of the enemy. Mm-hmm. You turn on the television. Wendy's open 24 hours <laughs> to fill your needs. This juicy cheeseburger. So you're looking and you're hungry. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. And then you don't want what's in your refrigerator you want what you see uh-huh. you want to say oh my god and then you wonder where these cravings come from that's a demon uh-huh. that's something that was planted oh i just need a frosty why <laughs> it's, it's, it's four in the morning right. you don't need a frosty it's okay it's okay you you really don't it's, it's good Okay, you, you go home you probably got some eggs and bacon some beef bacon in there some turkey bacon you probably good you go home, bust that up, you, you straight, right? Mm-hmm. But we don't want what the Most High provided. We want what the world showed. And then that drives us. And then nine times out of ten, that puts us, because even so, people that's on a budget, that little bit of finances that they might have put out in that particular time, on Wednesday, they need that. Mm-hmm. They at work, and now they're like, okay, I'm short on gas. Right. And I, I need, then they think in their mind, where did that money come from? Oh, oh that was that Frosty. No. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know. But these are what Satan, he put these things in a way to be stumbling blocks. Mm-hmm. Right? Let's get Hebrews, the second chapter, starting at the 14th verse. Come on. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same, Mm. that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil. Read. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So one of Satan's biggest tools has always been to place fear of the dying onto our people. Mm -hmm. Our men were slaughtered before our families for ages Even today, death is still used to keep our people still. We fear to leave our country simply because of false flag media and reports that always show the worst possible scenarios going on in a country. That's why they perpetuate all that nonsense. All the time. This is what's going on in Israel. This is what's going on in Africa. People are dying. It's a third world country. Okay, I'd be like, you know, you know, talk to my wife. Wife, how was it growing up? We had a garden and a, what, what is that wall you call? A, dr- a, a dural wall. Dural. I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of it. <laughs> you understand? God. It's a whole stone wall uh, around your place to privatize your home so that you're not looking at other people mm. okay you got uh, she got avocado tree she talked about going out in the morning and not going to the store but in her front yard to go pick a mango mm. i'm like i don't know what that is she had a maid couple of maids and a gardener i'm like how was you living and why did you come here <laughs> Praise the most high you came. God. But I'm like, this is not what they're showing mm-hmm. on TV. And this is not what they're collecting for. You understand? Like, I'm like, well, babe, did you have flies around your face? <laughs> you know, were you skinny with, with a pop belly? Is there something going on? You understand? Like, were you crying all the time eating porridge? <laughs> like, none of this. You know, I come to find, she's telling me, I'm like, okay, 
see, I get it from the source. These people are liars. Mm -hmm. Okay, they've been lying the whole time. Uh. Okay, this is what's going on. So they'll go in the most remote jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Africa is the biggest continent in the world. There are going to be some rural, rural areas. You fly into, okay, here goes some dense trees. I'm going here. This is, the, this is what I'm going to show as the whole Africa. Right. Okay? We're somewhere in the jungle. And look at all these kids starving. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like, like, come on. Go to North Philly and show them that this is, okay, before you show the Statue of Liberty, right, mm -hmm. go to North Philly in the hoods in some back alley somewhere where all the houses is run down, mm -hmm. okay, and show that and say, this is America, okay? This is what it is. Come here to get your passport, and this is the land of the free, right. home of trash. Right. Okay? Come on. But they don't do that. So they only show you the good aspects of what they want you to see. And then when it comes to the aspects that are great, like anybody that's grew up on an island, Puerto Rico, or grew up, you know, Barbados, and they wake up and it's just beauty, mm. and trees, and blue water, and sun. Okay, that, that's not this. Uh. Okay, that, 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 that is not this. Okay, you dealing with now, you know, the hoary frost of, of cold. Mm. Okay, it's coming. Yes, sir. Okay, you know, we have to realize the things that they've shown is part of that system, so, and it's a mind game. Yes, sir. Yes, it's psychological, yeah. Just like what you just said, to bring it back to what you said earlier, is an illusion. It's all an illusion. On one side of the earth, he's showing something to those people, and then on this side of the earth, he's showing us something, and it, we know it's a lie. Just like when we drive around out here, you know, it's, it's when you walk through this, these streets and you see what's going on, how Satan has really deceived the people. He took, just when you see these junkies out here, they took a, a physical substance and they taken it and it's putting them in a spiritual state. And here we are with a physical book we read in scriptures that's putting us in a spiritual set, state of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's... It's just amazing how I just think the most high for the, for his word, man. And and but I just think the most high for his word. That's just it. That's all God, I gotta say. Absolutely. So we have to understand, right? It says one of Satan's biggest tools is has always been placed is the the dying of our people. Men were slaughtered before their families for ages. Even today, death is still used to keep to keep our people still. We fear to leave the country simply because of false flag media reports that always show the worst possible scenario going on in the country. Terrorism in big red letterings on your screen make you fear going east. Government conspired bombings and all. That's all so our people are just put in their hands, right? And that's all they need to hear is a false flag. People see a 9-11, people see all these situations and believe that, okay, they're real. Or look at a Sandy Hook going back and looking at, you know, you don't find any children. You don't see any corpses. You don't see anything going down. But yet and still, that's what the people are dealing with. Just like now, notice that there's a push. When you look at CNN, the push is now guns. You got the synagogue shooting. Then there was a shooting in a nightclub. Now it's guns and engaging the people and this and that. Why? Because now that's going to be, obviously when things come in, laws have to come in. New gun reform, new this, new that. And if anything, all it does is keep a certain group of people with arms. Because now what did the people in the synagogue say? oh, well, we're we going to take matters in our own hands. We're just going to come strapped. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They're not going to say anything about the Jewish powers and, and them being strapped. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's for their safety. Mm -hmm. 
And guess what? It falls under the laws of them being protected. Okay? They're protecting themselves from hate crimes. See how that works? But guess what? There's no law in place that protects us from hate crimes. Okay? Let's get the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So there was a day that the angels went before the Father. Similar to how the angels go before the father now. And Satan decided to say, you know what? I'm going to go get in a business and see what they doing. Come on. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Where you coming from, man? Okay, this is why those ports when Christ sacrificed himself had to be shut. Okay, Satan, you got to listen. This business up here we got to do. My son is back. You got to stay, stay on earth. Stop coming up here every day bothering me about my servants on earth. Okay? The full spirit of Satan right here. Watch this now. Come on. Then Satan answered and said, from going to and fro in the earth. From going back and forth in the earth. That's where I'm coming from. I'm looking and seeing who I can accuse. Notice that, like I said, when we were dealing with Sirach 25, the unity of brethren, right? Well, Satan looking to make division. Where you coming from? Walking to and fro in the earth. I'm going looking at who I can cause division with. Okay? So now what does he find? He finds somebody that's unique. Knowing that, Job is an Edomite. Okay? There's none like him in the earth. But guess what? I, he's going to fold. Read. And from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And the most I put it right out. He's like, okay, listen, I'm going to tell you what. You walk to and fro, you come, to, you come for a problem. Here, I'm going to give you one. Have you considered my servant, Job? How does what? That there is none like him in the earth. Wait, what you talk about there's none like him in the earth? There was plenty of righteous Israelites in the earth. To let you know, Job was an Idumean. He was like, at this time, he's like, look, there's none like him in the earth. What you talking about? That fear of the Most High and is doing what he's doing? Guess what? I'm going to give you something that's rare. Okay, you want to find some fault? Try to find some fault in this servant. Read. A perfect and an upright man. He's perfect and upright. Read. One that feareth the Most High and eschewed evil. Read. Then Satan answered the Lord and said. What did he say? Doeth Job fear the Most High for naught? So does he fear the Most High for nothing? Read. Has, thou, has not thou made an hedge about him? It, 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 wait. Haven't you protected him? So you've, you, you've, you've protected him. So he fears the most high for nothing. Read. And about his house and about all that he hath on every side. Come on. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands mm. and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Come on. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold. All that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. Mm. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Read. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the... Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he, while, he was yet, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm. 
It's he's he listen, somebody came, you know, it's always somebody that's seen it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Child I'm tell you, man, I done seen it all. Yo, kids was in a the zone, they was they was doing something on, you know, having a feast and a party, some cakes and, and candles and mm-hmm. Listen, I seen it all. It, now it's death and destruction. Oh my goodness. Read. Verse 17. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea. Verse seven, in the middle of verse 17. Go ahead. And slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine. They, they was eating and drinking wine. They was partying. Read. In their eldest brother's house. In the, your, old, your oldest son. You know, you know, your oldest son, his house. Read. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And the most high blew on it. Go ahead. And it fell upon the young men. And, and it fell upon the young man. Come on. And they are dead. Mm. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Because and, he knew what it was. This is what they would do within the Old Testament if you were shamed. If you was put to shame. Now, why did he do this? Because he feared that what his sons and daughters did put the family to shame. So he shaved his head and rent his mantle, okay? Because they went a feasting and at a party, every man his day, as the scriptures say. Okay, so he feared and was like, wait, hold up now. I feel like what they've done was sin against the Most High. Read. Verse 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Most High. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged the Most High foolishly. And didn't blame the Most High for his loss. Okay, didn't go to the Father and say, why have you done this to me? Oh my goodness, this is just a test he put before me. He just blessed the Most High. So Satan knew the hedge of protection was on Job due to him being a righteous, due to him being righteous, and sought to cause him to forsake the Most High's ways through many atrocities, including the death of his own close family. Job, in the midst of his trouble, humbled himself and prayed to the Father and did not sin, nor did he speak foolishly against the Father. How many of us today lose far less and are ready to throw in the towel and be angry with the Most High? Satan has always played these games since the beginning of time. He's notorious for the tricks to get us to lose the hedge like he's telling half-truths in order for you to commit something evil even without your knowing. Satan's always been a master of illusions. To make it seem worse than it is, right? Let's get Genesis. Let's look at one of the original tricks. Genesis, the third chapter, verse one. Now the serpent was was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Most High thy power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea. He said unto who? He said unto the woman. He said to Adam. He said unto the woman. Read. Yea, hath the Most High said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the See, garden? Subtly, he knew that the commandment went to Adam. So he so he went to the weaker vessel. Looking to show you that Satan will never go head on with somebody that's a little bit stronger in power. He's going to look for the crack. He's going to look for those that are a little bit lesser or weaker in the spirit to try to come in and infiltrate. He knew the commandment didn't go through Eve. He knew, he knew the most I knew he spoke. Satan knew the most I spoke to Adam, so he went to Eve. Read. Verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, 
may we eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, mm. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Most High hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye, Yea, ye shall not surely die. For the Most High doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Exactly. So he even, Satan even had a concept to understand what time was. Because he knew a day was a thousand years. So he told him, surely this day you won't die. And keep in mind, once Eve took partook, it was like, huh, I ate, to, I ate this fruit. I didn't die. He was right. Not understanding what a literal day was according to the most high. Okay? But he did die within that day. Adam only made it to 930. So he didn't make the day. Okay, he died within the day. But see, this is how Satan play these little mind games and use plays on words to get people to fall. Okay, it's a little, it's, 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 it's a lot of lies wrapped, wrapped around a little bit of truth. Okay, this is how Satan deal. Okay, so listen, one thing that you must always be leery of is flattery. Satan was gaming her up. Hey, 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 I, I'm, I'm going to give you some knowledge. And see, what was one thing that she had to deal with? She had to deal with still the order of what the Most High placed in the garden. He spoke to Adam. So she still had to go to her Lord to get the, the information of what her father, what the father revealed. Okay? Order have always been in. It's only until you start to get into the scriptures as we begin to sin more and more and more that these laws begin to be reiterated. But order have always been in place. Okay? So what did she gain by getting fooled by Satan? A little bit more information, a little bit more power, some knowledge that he didn't have. And because of this lie and trick, we're in the status we're in now. So Satan knew it wasn't a literal day. The most I meant when he told Adam not to touch the tree or he would die, he understood that the father meant a thousand years. He also made it seem like the father was keeping them from being gods when they were already immortal. Think about that. Well, if you eat from this knowledge or this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like gods. Mm. They're already <laughs> immortal. That's crazy. Deception. This is what Satan do. He trick you and make you feel like, you know, he can give you something greater that you already have. Wow. That's, that's the definition of a snake oil salesman. Okay, you already have something and somebody going to sell you something you already got at a diminished rate. See, that's what, what comes in with the mindset of being under Satan. That's, you know, like when people, you know, go and deal with cheating. That's the same deal that, that, that they got in the garden. Here, let me present this woman to you. Right? Yeah. Okay. You think she looked like this and this and that. She, yeah, yeah, everything's good. You know, she got a better shape than your wife. Everything's good. You know, she cooked the food. Her food is better. She's sweeter. Everything's better. Okay, good. Boom. You get with her. She take that spank off. Mm. <laughs> what is this? Mm. You take that, take that wig off. Mm. Hey, hey, make, 
at least can you make that Alfredo you made the other day? Oh yeah, let, let me let me let, let me go call. You know, let me go call the Olive Garden. Mm. Oh, that was Olive Garden. I thought you made it. It came out the oven. I, I just yeah, I just reheated. Mm. Everything good. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you had everything that was good at home, and you left for this. Mm. This is what you left for. You already had something good. You should have just keep, you should have just kept it the way it was. And now look at you. You all salty. <laughs> Satan always be trying. People fall into his mind games all the time, thinking that what they have is not as good as what the Most High already blessed them with. Okay. And I can go on and on and on with examples. But it happens like that all the time. Okay, let's get Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, mm. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Exactly. So the Father is outside of time, and in the earth, so a thousand years is like a day to it. Adam decided... Or Adam died at the age of 930, as I stated before. He died within a day that the Most High was speaking of. This concept of being gods is very much part of the New Age spins on religion. Satan also deceives people into these types of beliefs in order to make people proud and defiant against the Father. They seek their own power through meditation, drugs, and many other inordinate acts against the Father's laws, such as homosexuality. While seeking to become gods, they become servants to demons that inhabit their bodies, giving them a false sense of what their actual abilities are. This same tactic is how is now being used to promote the mark of the beast. They promise power and superhuman advantages of having it. Okay? Let's get to Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. We're in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. Brethren, my heart desire and pray to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. That they might be saved. Read. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High. Talk about Israel. They got a zeal of the Most High. Read. But not according to knowledge. But not according to what? But not according to knowledge. See, be, listen, even in Romans, even when this book was written, the people were still struggling with the same situations. We had a zeal of the Most High. We was praying, singing, dancing, worshiping, all that. Mm -hmm. It was all good. But nobody was reading the scriptures. They had a zeal of the Most High but not according to knowledge. Read. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness. Of the Most High's what? Righteousness. Which are his commandments. Read. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Let me tell you what God say. Mm. Let me tell you what I think God think. Let me tell you. I, 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 he, why come? He, he don't care. What day you worship? As long as you worship him, amen. <laughs> amen? Amen anyhow. <laughs> it's not what you say. It's what the Most High said. Okay? Trying to establish their own righteousness. Read. Having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Most High. Exactly, because it shows you that instead of dealing with the one that was the pen and author of the Bible, and who the Son came and was the living word, instead of submitting to that power, you decide to submit to your own and make some other way. That's why Christ said, look, if somebody come up some other way, he's a thief and a robber. I'm the door. 
Okay? Yes, sir. You can't come in some other way. You can't say this is the way to the truth or this is the way to the truth or this is the way to righteousness or living a clean life or doing what's right in the most high and take away what the father said. That's crazy. Okay? These people with their own blinded lust and the illusion that Satan have given them, given them, they're, they're their own gods. They're celebrated as gods. Because now, understand this. Everything that we're teaching, brothers and sisters can look in the Bible and get the same answers. Okay? You're set out to have a teacher, but through that, you are to study on your own. And you should be able to go in the Bible and understand what the teacher is teaching, reading it, and agree with that and understand it. Well, what you see in modern day churches is they've taken that away. Where the scripture go like this. Let me see here. Let me, let me find one. Bang. All right. Uh, here we go. This looks like a good sermon. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. For I speak to you, Gentiles, for as much as I'm apostle to the Gentiles, and I'll magnify my office. Okay, shut the book. <laughs> the office of God. <laughs> like, no. I, I, stop it. Would you give me more scriptures? Edify me on what you just said. But see, if somebody deal like that, you're only now looking at that minister or pastor based off of all the stories and proverbs they've told you. So the only way you can get wisdom is not in the Bible because they wasn't coming out the Bible. You can only get wisdom based off of the stories they said. So, pastor, okay, explain to me that story you was telling me about your life. How did you deal in the situation? Well, what I did was I prayed to God, but what I did was this, this, and that. Okay, where's the scriptures in this? Where's the wisdom in it? So now the wisdom is only coming from the example that you gave me from you and not the example that's within scripture. See, that takes the power away from the book. Nothing should take the power away from the book. Okay, seek ye out of the book. Okay, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Read. Verse 4. Come on now. For Christ is the end of the law. He's the what? He is the end of the law. He's the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. So our own people have brought into the new age traps in being in the so-called truth. They shun the law in exchange for the laws they have created in their own hearts in order to serve the Father, but to be their own gods. That's just like I was watching um, last night. Yet again, I was looking at the uh, the Peace FM debate with the rabbi, you know, that elder did. And I remember him asking something specifically. He was like, you don't believe in the oral law? He was like, those dots that are in the Hebrew, I'm like, the vowel points? He was like, those dots are the law. That's the law. See, and if people was to look at this, they're like, okay, well, you know, how is this brown man, how is this black man going to be telling him who's, who's a Jewish guy what the truth is, okay? Because he's not. <laughs> we are. Like Elder said, like, I, you can't, I can't be anti-Semitic. I'm Semitic. I am Semitic. So here's the thing. Every new age understanding and everything that comes against the scripture is there to get you out of the book. Anytime you talk to somebody and they're dealing with these new age ideologies, the first thing they'll tell you is they'll try to diminish the book. You talk to, to, to somebody that's in Islam, for instance. No, they'll say, well, I believe in your book. Why don't you believe in mine? No, 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 no. Don't minimize my book. We coming straight out the scriptures. That's what we're dealing with. Anything that would diminish the book is there to establish an alternate righteousness in reality. You got to stay away from that. Okay. So it's like this. They will even go as far as to compare Yeshia to some religious entities 
like Gandhi or Buddha as if Christ was some great thinker ahead of his time. The Bible says Christ is the end of the law, not Buddha or any other philosopher. Okay, let's get Colossians 2 and 5. Come on. For though I be absent in the flesh. For though I be absent in the flesh. Yet I'm with you in the spirit. In the spirit. Read. Joying and beholding your order. Mm. And the steadfast steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Your order being in subjection to the most high. All the dominion that come in with the church. Read. Verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Yeshua the Lord. So walk ye in him. Mm. Rooted. And built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught. As ye have been taught, read. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Come on. Verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. Okay, listen. Sometime when you get and you ask a biblical answer. Biblical answers don't take forever to explain. They're really right into the point. Okay. What about this? What about that? Okay. Let me take you to Romans, this and this and that. Let me take you to Ephesians, this, this and that. Here you go. Boom. There go the answer. Okay. Enough said. See, that's what we'll show you. Like a lot of times righteous conversations are quick. Mm -hmm. They're quick. They're, they're to the point. You spending time explaining something. Okay. Chances are you're not. You're not rightly dividing the word. Or if somebody's explaining something to you, they're not rightly dividing the word. Philosophy is a dangerous thing. Read. After the traditions of men, after the rudiment of the world. Did you see that? It says after the traditions of men. Uh -huh. So after their traditions and then philosophy itself is also traditional. That's past. That's a pass down skill. Uh -huh. Okay. Philosopher to the philosopher. Oh, well, I believe in this and that. Listen, I come in, I come in the I come in the spirit of my master teacher. Who was what? A philosopher? Well, what, what book was they coming out of? Read. After the rudiment of the world and not after Christ. So our own people run to philosophy and not after Christ. Hence, we are deceived continually. The Bible is our way to avoid Satan's philosophical snares so, so, through those so-called spiritual leaders. We follow traditions like Christmas in order to fit with the pagan world and what they're doing to our own downfall. Would Christ keep the societal holiday customs that we hold so dear today? Would he do them? Would Christ be at the New Year's Eve party? Would he be at the Easter celebration? What would Christ do? Let's get John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true power, and Yeshua Christ, whom, hath, whom thou hast sent. Read. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. I finished the work which was given to me. Uh, Christ understood the mission. He had work to do. So he said, I finished the work which was given to me. Come on. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which, which I had with thee before the world was. Come on. I was manifested. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. He have done what? I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. See, this is a deep scripture because Christ let us know that the disciples knew the name of a higher. He manifested the name of the most high to the disciples that he was given in the world. Because guess what? Just like it is now, those Pharisees, those Sadducees, they was called on another God. But Christ revealed the God of all gods to the disciples. Read it again. Starting at the top, verse 6. Read. I have manifested thy name unto the men, which thou gavest me out of the world. Mm. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. And they have kept thy word. They kept, they, they, they kept praying in the name of Ahiah. 
They kept serving the God of the Most High. They kept thy word. Read. Verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Are of thee. Read. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, mm. and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Mm. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray not for the who? I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Wait, hold up. I thought Christ was all about the world. He about everybody. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So we understand now what John 3.16 is speaking of. Go back to the top of the verse. This right? The Matter of fact, go there to John 17 and 6. And then go and read that verse. This is um, 17 verse 6. Right. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Out of the what? Out of the world. Out of the what? Out of the world. Out of the what? Out of the world. For God so loved the world. Out of the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believeth on him. Shall do what? Shall believeth on him. Now watch this. Read it again. I have manifested thy name unto the men. Which thou gavest me out of the world. Out of the world, read. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And thou gavest them me, read. And they have kept thy word. And they believed. So when you read John 3 16, it's speaking of them. It's speaking of this example. Read. Let's skip back. And go right back down to that verse. This is verse nine. Verse nine. I pray for them. I pray for who? I pray for them. I pray for them. That's in John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. so that whosoever shall believeth in him. Who believed? Those disciples. Okay. okay. Everybody didn't believe at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Read. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray not for the world. So he made the distinction. He gave you the understanding. I'm not sitting here praying for all the sinners. Mm. So what they teach it up in these churches right. is utter garbage. Okay? It's not what Christ, that's not what he, that's not it. Read. But for them which thou hast given me. But them for thou which has given me. Who you've given me is the world I'm speaking of. Mm. Read. For they are, my, are thine. Are thine. They're yours. Read. And all mine are thine. And all those that you've given me are yours. Okay, read. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Mm. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. Look, I'm no more amongst them. I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. Are in the world. Read. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they. <laughs> uh. Y'all see that? Uh. Keep them that you have given me. This is the world that I'm speaking of. Mm. This is the world that John 3.16 is speaking of. Not everybody. This is whom he prayed for. Okay, everybody not know. Listen, sinners alike, and everybody would love to claim to have that blessed that comes with a believer. But it doesn't work that way. That's one of Satan's mind tricks as well. He's speaking to the whole world. He's speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Not while you drinking, smoking, clubbing, lying, stealing, uh, thieving, and all that. Uh, he didn't die for you. Uh, I don't care how much you believe in him. Satan, guess what? Demons believe too. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They got a death sentence. And so do you. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death. So we have to understand what and whom John 3.16 is speaking of. Mm -hmm. And these are the precepts that bring it out. Read. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, mm. that they may be one as we are. Keep through his what? Through his name. Through his what? Holy Father, keep through thine own name 
those whom thou hast given me. Wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. 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 Revelation 12. I think it's the 12th chapter. 11th verse. Let me, let me see to make sure. I get it. Go ahead. Keep reading. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it from last night. Don't worry about it. Is it 11? Yeah, it probably is. It's 11, right? One moment. I get it. Keep reading. This is the book of the book of John, chapter 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, mm -hmm. but these are in the world. Ah. And I can't and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. 14 and 1. Revelation 14 and 1, right? Yes, sir. Come on. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount on Mount Zion, Read. and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand. Read. Having the Father's name. Having the what? Having the Father's name. Having the what? Having the Father's name. In their where? Written in their foreheads. Oh, man. Oh, man. We talk about some elect now. This is the world he was speaking of. This is in whom, when we read the scriptures, who Christ was praying for. Okay, those that, that have given, remember, he said, I revealed my name to them. Which was a seal upon them. Okay. He's praying for them to keep the elect. Starting with the disciples who were the elect. The pillars in heaven. Read verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. I kept them in thy what? In thy name. Read now. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept and none of them is lost. And none of them are lost. Read. But the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. Mm. And now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Okay. Verse 14, I have given them thy word. Read. And the world hath hated them. And the world hath hated them. Because why? Because they are not of the world. See that? Read. Even as I am not of, this, of the world. Exactly. So see, it's showing you it's not about everybody. Because he said, look, I have given them my word. And the world have hated them. So if he was praying for the whole world, what, what is he speaking of? Now, I don't know. If, if we're dealing with Christian doctrine, I'm confused. But he lets you know in whom the world he was speaking of. Those that you gave me. Those that are mine are thine. This is the world I'm speaking of. But the world outside of them hates them. For my namesake and for your namesake. Read verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. I pray that you shouldn't take them out of the world. Read. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. But keep them from evil. Read. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Now, see that. So not only was Christ concerned for the world, he also had a mission that Satan has taken to great lengths to hide and minimize. Christ specifically stated that he revealed the Most High's name to the people that he was given from the Father as a key part in his prayer. Satan has, has, has pre, Satan has pre, pre meted pre meted pre meted go ahead elders <laughs> the church as well as the israelite movement 
with the food permeated. Oh, okay, sorry. there it is. There, yeah, two two Israelite brothers. There it is. Okay, all right. It's permeated. Okay, the church as well as the Israelite movement with the foolish idea that it doesn't matter what the Most High's name truly is. As we can see, it is in direct opposition, right, to one of the key parts of the doctrine of Christ. Christ's name and the Father's name are highly important. So for somebody to tell you it doesn't matter, they're highly demonic and anti-Christ. They're against what Christ said. He said, I reveal my name to them. And they kept thy name. So for somebody to tell you it doesn't matter, what did Christ say? Okay, you, you called to follow Christ, right? What did he say? Explain this. Well, you know, Christ really didn't mean that. What, what he meant was he got many names. What doctrine and what spell is the world under? Okay. Hebrews 2 and 9. Let's get it. But we see Yeshia, who was made a little lower than the angels. He was made how? A little lower than the angels. He was made how? A little lower than the angels. No, he was made immaculate. A little lower than the angels. No, he, he was born of the Holy Spirit and pre his mother was impregnated by a spirit. Who was made a little lower than the angels. No, I don't believe that. Read. For the suffering of death. For the suffering of death. He was made like us for the suffering unto death. Read. Crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of the Most High, should taste death for every man. For every man, read. For it became him for whom all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing my sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Read. For both he that, sa that, that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified, are all of one, of, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Come on. Saying, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. Unto thy what? Saying, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. See, it said that he would declare his name unto the brethren. Okay. And we would sing praises to his name like we do now. See, this is the importance. There's so many scriptures. Anybody tell you that understanding the name of the Most High and Christ it's not, anybody tell you don't matter, it's not of the most high. When there's so many scriptures that say it does matter. Okay, you can't skip over these things. This is a reference to a prophecy in the Old Testament, which stated Christ would come and declare the most high's name to the brethren. What's old, what old scripture, Old Testament scripture? Let's get Psalms 22 and 18. They... Part, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Read. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, my strength has thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword. Deliver my soul from the sword, from destruction. Read. My darling from the power of the dog. Mm. Save me from the lion's mouth. Mm. For thou hast heard me from the, from the horns of the unicorns. Come on. I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I, will I praise thee. So you see that mirrored in Hebrews. You see that mirrored within the scripture. Okay. What Christ was, was written of in the Old Testament, he, he fulfilled within the New Testament. Right. Let's get Malachi 1 and 14. But curse be the deceiver. But curse be the deceiver. Read. Which hath in his flock male and male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. Read. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. His name is what? Dreadful among the heathen. His name is what? Dreadful among the heathen. You want to know why people hate the name of Ahiah and Yeshia and it invo invokes so much emotion and spirit? Because his name is dreaded. 
amongst the heathen. And the heathen gods that that are over those nations. Anytime you invoke that name, it, it, it you know, it's either going to do two things. It's either going to bring joy. Shalom in the name of Ahiah by Hashem Yeshaya. Shalom, brother. How you doing? Or, hey, Shalom in the name of Ahiah. Oh, you one of them rebels. Oh, you one of them. Amongst the heathen is dreadful. Okay? Deal with any other thing, any other name. But the, the, the name of the Most High, the name of his son, is dreadful amongst the heathen. Okay? So this is the reason why the Most High name had been hidden. The wicked fear the Most High's name and can't bear to even hear it. Okay? That's just like anything else. You go anywhere else and say any other name, it's accepted. Mm -hmm. Praise, praise, you know, praise Yahweh. Okay, cool. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. And most people know the definition of that. Oh, you know, that Yahweh shot. Okay, that's like, that's Joshua's name. Okay, good. I could deal with that. You know what I mean? Praise Yahweh. Oh, okay, cool. That's, you know, that's what the Jews call The Jewish people call them. Okay, cool. Because amongst the heathen, it's accepted. It's okay. You understand? You, you can go into a Christian church and call on Jehovah. There will be no rebuke. There will be no correction. Okay, you let you go up in somewhere and say, you know, you want a testimony service. You know, hey, welcome to our church. You know, would you like some remarks? Sure. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. I'd like to thank the Most High Ahia by Hashem Yeshua Rock. Jesus! Oh, Lord. Deacons. Deacons. We got to pray for deacons. Exit rear. Like, what I say? Why does that invoke so much response? Because you know why? These scriptures are real. His name is dreadful amongst the heathen. It's like, can't, can't, because it vexed the spirit. It vex, it, it, it vex it to the core. Okay. They know what, they know that knowing which God you are calling on is, is highly important when it comes down to spiritual contact with any spirit. That's invocation. OK, the last thing Satan wants is for us to call on the right God altogether as a nation. OK. First Timothy four and 13. Come on. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. That's what you said last night. Exactly. Verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to, ex to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. That is in thee. Don't, don't neglect the gift that's within you. But it doesn't come without reading. Okay, read. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with laying on of hands of the, the presbytery. presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Read. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, 
thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Mm. We must take heed to the doctrine of Christ, including proclaiming the proper names. And that's how we will save, will be saved, along with those who will also hear and take heed as well. Okay. By laying on of hands, baptism, in the name of Ahia Bashim Yeshaya Wa Rawak. Correct. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son. And Holy Spirit. Okay. Helping helping ourselves. Taking that same baptism. And helping save others. That are baptized. Within that. Okay. There's no other name under heaven. That a man shall be saved. Here's the issue. People say that. And then say you got many names. Okay. I Listen. First of all. Anybody that would baptize me. And say Christ got many names, but then say there's only one name under heaven that a man should be saved. I would be nervous. Which one is it, pastor? Is it the scripture you read or what you're saying? I need to understand. Let me know. Is it many names or is it only one name under heaven that a man should be saved? Please give me some understanding. So I could read a scripture that says that there's only one name, but you're telling me there's many. Okay, I need you to give me the scripture that rebuts what Christ said. You won't find it. He's not against himself. So I would be nervous going to the water with, with that in somebody's mind and them saying that he got many names. So what name really are, do you believe in that you're putting me under the water with? So if he got many names and you're admitting that, what if you think that Christ, Jesus, Yahweh, and Satan are one and the same? So you're telling me you got many names. Because so I really, I really don't know what name you believe in. So what name are you baptizing me under? <laughs> because remember, it's talking about the presbyter and laying on of hands. So it's somebody that's baptizing you in the name of what they believe in. Saying that it's going to help save them and you. But suppose ye they believe in something else. And how do you know that? Especially if they, they ascribe to telling you they believe in multiple names. So which one, just like with the Jewish powers, you have their tree when you look at those names that's in their chart. There's multiple names in there. But they got one name that's higher than all of them. So every other name in that tree is acceptable. <laughs> you understand? But they believe in Satan himself. So when they're praying, they could say this name to the left or this name to the right. But they really mean him. The fallen one. So you can't deal with somebody that say... I believe in multiple names of God. Okay? What, I know what God will accept, whatever you call him. And I know, also know what God it is, according to the Bible, that, that given his son uh, one name and have he have one name. Okay? There's two different gods here. Right? We must take heed to the doctrine of Christ, including proclaiming the proper names. And, and that's how we will be saved along with those who will hear and take heed. Let's get Romans 10 and 13. Come on. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Shall do what? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. No, 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 brother. That's say names. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. No, no, no. There's an S there. The name of the Lord. Read. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. The name. Singular. Everything. Every, every, listen. The most high uh, is against philosophy. 
Okay, it's one way. Read. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Now check that out. So how would people, so to show you that you can't demonize everybody either. How would you, how could people call on him in whom they've not believed? Because a lot of people don't even, they haven't even heard Ahiah. That even they haven't even heard Yeshua. How could they call on him if they if they've never <laughs> if they never believed in him? Read. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? If they never heard of him, well, I never heard that name. Okay, how could you believe on him whom whom they've never heard of? Read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Without a what? A preacher. A without a what? Without a preacher. Okay, now somebody that sent that the Most High have revealed his name to have to be the one. And this is what I was explaining when I was going in earlier mm -hmm. about dominion and rank. Mm -hmm. Okay. How could you, re how could somebody Show somebody the name of the Most High, lest they be sent, and it was revealed to them. And they've, and the Most High, have given them authority to be able to teach and break it down. Read verse fifteen. And how shall they preach except they be sent? That's the only way. Uh. <laughs> Read as it is written. As it's what? As it is written. As it's what? As it is written. Read how beautiful. Are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Come on. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They have, but not everyone has obeyed the gospel. Read. For Elias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Mm. So then faith cometh by hearing. By what? By hearing. By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Okay, come on now. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. There's... Yes. Yes, they have. Read. Yes, verily. They sound went unto all the earth, their words into the ends of the world, into the ends of the world. But they, I go ahead. So let's look at the word call in Greek. It's from G 1941. Right. Middle voice. Okay, from G1909 and from G2564, it says to entitle by implication to invoke. So when you call on a name, all those songs we sing, when you call on that name, that great, that's invocation. That's bringing a spirit in. So whatever name you invoke is what spirit comes in. So if you call on a God that's a lesser God that's over demons, guess what's coming? Demons. If you call on the name of the God of all gods, okay, guess what spirit's coming in? The God that sitteth, the spirit that sitteth at the throne. The righteous spirit. So it says by implication to invoke for aid, which means for help, for worship, for testimony, to call on. So when we're calling on the name of the most high, it's about invocation. Okay, that's what you bring up. That's the spirit that you bring up. Okay, guess what? And those that are sorcerers. That are out in the world, that cast spells, they know that. That's why they'll keep the Most High's name from you with painstaking processes to make sure that all, all you can do is call on the wicked one. It's about invocation, brothers and sisters. Healing in the name of Yeshua. Understand. Power over these evils and serpents in the name of Yeshua. Invocation is key. 
Okay? That's why one could say, they would come in and say, you know what? Well, listen, as long as we believe in Torah, we can dwell together. La, ah. Okay? You can't invoke and have in your heart and your spirit the name of another God in the midst of the congregation of the righteous. How does that work? So naturally, the God that I serve is against your God. So now we're having spiritual warfare in the same building. This is why we must all speak the same things and have the same judgment as the scriptures say. Because guess what? What you believe in and whom you believe in would be against my God. See that? So if we look at a phrase to invoke, it parallels the same on the left hand side where a witch or Satanist must know the name of a specific spirit that they hope to contact if they wish to appeal to that spirit to help them. The Most High is above all spirits, so if you willingly call on another name, then the name he gave, then expect and, and expect not to be heard, the scripture that it says that scripture could also read whosoever shall invoke to appeal unto the surname of the Lord shall be saved. A specific name of of a specific name is of extreme importance. Satan knows this fact and has plotted for years to keep us ignorant of that fact. For years. The deception goes deep. Okay, it goes very deep. He kept it hidden for years. So we could so our power and our authority in the name of the most high would be diminished. So we wouldn't be able to see the things that we read of in scripture take place because we can't invoke the name. The, hit, the, the sick won't, won't be healed. They won't recover. Because we don't have the proper name to invoke to bring forth healing. So of course it's been a plot to keep it from you and me and all the rest of these people. Invocation, brothers and sisters, is key. Is key. Revelation 12 and 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Come on. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. It was angry with the woman. Read. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Of her what? Of her seed. Of her what? Of her seed. Read. Which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yeshua Christ. These are Satan's primary targets in the earth. Those that keep the commandments and have a true testimony of Christ, which includes revealing the Father's name back to his people. You are not a threat to Satan if you're still willing to call on him after receiving the true name of the Father. So there's no threat to Satan when you get the name of the Most High, right? And his name is Ahiah, you know that. His son's name is Yeshia, but you still choose to call Satan, Satan. See, it doesn't apply then. It says for in times of ignorance, the Most High winked. So when you didn't know, and you was calling on the Most High with the name that all you knew was, was Jesus or Yahweh or Jehovah or whatever. Okay, at that time, you were ignorant to the fact. And he honored what you were saying. But now, once you know the truth, for you to go and know the truth and revert back to what Satan is saying and what he's calling himself. Now you've opened yourself up to straight demonic possession. Okay. 
Oh, I know his name's Ahia, but you know what? That's not the name I know. I'm comfortable with Jesus. So I'm going to go deal with that. Okay, no, you can't do that. Okay, because that's not, that's, that's the name of a lesser God. That's the name of, 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 of a God that invokes things that you don't want in your midst. Okay. See, the power of invocation is important. And knowledge, the correct knowledge of the most high is, 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 is important and key. Spirit and in truth. That's the time we're living in. Let's go to Proverbs 30, 30 and 1. Come on. And the words of Agur, the son of Yekiah, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Yukal. Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy who hath ascended up unto the heaven or descended who hath gathered the wind in his in his fist who hath who hath bound the waters in a garment who hath established all the ends of the earth what is his name what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell mm. every word of the most high is pure he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him so the constant captives and evil that our people went through caused the Most High's name to almost be erased from history altogether. Had it not been for the Father's mercy, we wouldn't have his name to trust on now for protection. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Come on. And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, Read. The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. First of all, the first thing the Most High did was identify who he was. The God of your fathers. The God of who? The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. Read. And they shall say to me, what is his name? What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. No, 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 no. No, wait, hold up. He is that he is. And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. No, he didn't mean that because psychologically, mm. right, that don't make no sense because he's speaking to you. You wouldn't say that. You would say he is that he is. Wait, hold up now. Moses, maybe Moses didn't answer the question right. Maybe he didn't ask the question right. Right. Maybe Moses was off. Right. And, and notice, I need you all to understand something. I, to make the wise, the simple. Moses is the writer of the book. <laughs> so if Moses meant to interpret it, he is that he is. He would have wrote that. See how you can say something so simple is deep, though? Mm -hmm. Moses is the writer of the book. So if Moses purposed to change it and say, well, the Most High meant this. Mm -hmm. Moses would have wrote it. So watch this now. Moses is writing the account, right? This is Torah, right? Uh -huh. So read it, verse 13. Verse 13. And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Mm. And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thy say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Mm. And the Most High said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the most high thy power of your fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever. For how long? 
forever. Wait, hold up. Nah, nah, nah. Till you change it. My name forever. Read. And this is my memorial unto all generations. To all generations. All generations aren't fulfilled. You understand? So the most High's name is and have always been a higher. His name forever. Okay. That never changes. All generations. Okay, that's his memorial, right? This is the name the father gave our forefathers to be remembered forever. We did not know his name prior, just like today. We were com in complete ignorance of it before that. Let's get Psalms 91 and 14. Come on. This is the book of Psalm 91, verse 14. Read. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. Does he have known my what? My name. Listen, on and on and on and on and on. Record after record after record after record after record. Record after record. Showing you that the name of the Most High is paramount. Uh -huh. Read verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Exactly. So understand his name is important. So if somebody come to you and say, well, well, the name of the most high is why we can't gather. And why we can't bring Israel together. The name of the Most High is a stumbling block. It should be. Christ said he's a rock. He's the rock of offense. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, no. You're not going to call on another God and come together. Okay, no. You're going to call on the same thing. Right? Notice, it made the point of saying, knowing the Most High's name as part of the deliverance process. If one wants to be delivered out of their troubles, if one wants to be delivered from the destruction that's coming, everybody that live on this earth would agree that, A, we're living in the last days. Everybody would agree to that. And they would, they, would, they would agree that a judgment is coming. Everybody would agree with that. Okay, well, listen. There's a name that's key for your deliverance out of those troubles. Those that are not calling and invoking on the name in that day of trouble will not be saved. Period. No exceptions. Especially for Israel. Period. So they can they can yah it up all they want. Yah is not going to help you in the day of trouble. It's not happening. Okay, you better know the name that helped the children prior. The God that delivered them out of trouble prior, you must know that that same power is the same power that's going to deliver the children of Israel now out of trouble. Okay? Notice, Moses is like, when I come to the children of Israel and they ask me, what's your name? When I say, okay, we're coming and we're going to go through the Red Sea. We're going through all this. What should I call them? When I raise my staff in the air and I call on a God, what's the God that's going to guide us out of this trouble? Ahia, Ashaw, Ahia. Not Jesus, not God. Okay? Oh, God, help me. You know, when you say that out there in the universe, in total ignorance, you know what? All the gods be like, who? Who, me? Mm -hmm. 
Me? Who? Me? Huh? Huh? Like, huh? Oh, God, help me. Oh, God. Oh, thou art God. Who, me? Let me answer that one. There's many gods in the earth. So you need to identify who you're invoking. Okay? Matthew 10 and 5. Come on. These 12, Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go into the way of the Gentiles, but do what? And into any city of the, Samarit of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go, rather, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The house of where? The house of Israel. Interesting. Read. And as ye go, preaching, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? Because why? Who is operating here? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Levi, right? Yes, sir. So they was getting the kingdoms at heaven. hand. Just the ten tribes. <laughs> Preaching to Israel, the kingdom is at hand. Mm -hmm. Read. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Read. And, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Mm. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, preaching, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Uh. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. So Yeshua sent the apostles to a people who were lost. Obviously, if you're bringing in a belief system to a people, you will naturally give them the name for the God of that belief system. By knowing this particular name, they had power to cast out devils and many other things. Right? Here we go. Because here's what happens when you're dealing with another God and you feel like you can do with that name that you could do with the true name of the Most High. It doesn't work the same way. Right? Let's get Acts. Chapter 19, verse 13. Come on. Then certain of the vagabond Jews. So what is a vagabond Jew? Right? Right? What, what, what in the world is a vagabond Jew, right? Get vagabond in the strong concordance. You're in Acts 19 and 13. Give me the word here for vagabond. Mm-hmm. There it is. Read it. Vagabond is G4022. Come on. It says, from and including its alternate, to come all around, that is, stroll, stroll, vacuate, veer, fetch, fetch a comp compass, vagabond, wandering about. Wandering about. Strollers, okay. Strollers, wanderers. Right. A stroller, a wanderer. Okay, one that go from place to place to place. Mm -hmm. From doctrine to doctrine to doctrine. You don't know what you believe in. Cool. Toss to and fro. I can, listen, I can call God anything. It's okay. A vagabond Jew. You, you can't eat, you can't, you don't got no home. Read. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists took upon them. See, listen. See, when you're a vagabond Jew, listen, you're going you're gonna to associate yourself with people that's of like mind. you going all over the place, with, from place to place, getting your understanding. So guess what you're going to do? You're going to associate your place, yourself with people that also go all over the place and can't stay in one spot mm -hmm. and, and be taught and learn. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They decided in their mind they were going to be exorcists. Mm. Okay, this is what the Bible's talking about, casting out spirits. We're going to become exorcists. To show you they was trying to do something new. Mm -hmm. 
They was, try, they was trying to be famous in the land. We're going to be like, yo, we're we going to go around and people going to see us and we're just going to be casting out spirits everywhere. And people going to, we're going to have a fame out here. Mm. Don't worry, it's going to pay off soon. But what we got to do is we got to take the doctrine of all the top elders we see and put it together. And then we'll keep trying it until it works. Mm. Read took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Yeshua, saying we adjure you by Yeshua, whom Paul preacheth whom Paul preacheth alright let's try what Paul's saying Paul's calling on this Yeshua guy okay Yahweh isn't working right now okay let's see okay if Yeshua works read verse 14 and they were seven sons one of Scavia, a Jew, and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yeshia I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Who are you? You invoking that name. You ain't got no power. Who are you? You don't believe in this name. To show you too. That just because you know the name of the Most High, if you don't line up with the law, statutes, and commandments and wield the power and integrity that comes with having the name, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, I'm invoking it, but my life don't line up with the scripture. So they was invoking it. They had the name, but they didn't believe in them. They weren't living their life accordingly. So they're like, okay, let me see. The Spirit's like, look, Paul, I know. That name you just mentioned, Yeshia, I know him. But y'all some clowns. Come on. Verse 16. And the men in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. He's like, look, I'm going to show you how much you a clown. Watch. You ain't got no power over nothing because I got power over you. Watch. Look. Boom. Now what? Read. Leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out the house naked and wounded. Naked and wounded. You came in with clothes on. You saw, you know, hey, we about to get together. We about to do this exorcism. We about to get some flame, right? And then you leave there naked and bloody. How you get naked and bloody? Okay, I don't understand. That's how much uh, the, the spirit was like, look, I'm going to show these cats how much power they got. Read. Verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus and fell and fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord, Yeshua, was magnified. See, and listen, even though they was doing something wrong, mm -hmm. it actually worked for the most high's purpose. Because they're like, look, you see them guys? Don't be like them guys. They was calling on every other name. And then they called on Yeshia, and they made that spirit mad. I, listen, I never seen nobody calling on some other name, and it, 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 it invokes so much, you know, activity. Mm -hmm. They said Yeshia, and that spirit just left and dealt with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, this name, there must be something in this name. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, hold up. Let me go find somebody that wields this, this name with power. Where Paul at? See, the people that, that preach the gospel are known. Okay? When time goes, when, when the time come and situations go, whether people say it now or not, people know who the Most High is dealing with. But Jacob, seek of a sign. So here, here we go. It's like, okay, all of a sudden, they're like, okay, the Most High, I know he's dealing with Paul because Paul wheeled that name and he cast out spirits. They said it. And the spirit leapt on him and actually started to go in action. So let me go find somebody that know how to use it. Mm -hmm. See, all was, they, it, was a, it was a fame going out the land then. People were in fear. Mm -hmm. Read. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord, Yeshua, was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their, their deeds. Mm. The exorcists were having no luck calling on calling on more powerful demons to get rid of an evil spirit present and resorted to using Christ's real name.
they lack the spiritual street cred in order to call on the name of Christ for help. The people at Ephesus now saw the power of the name of Yeshia and the power which could be wielded through his true followers. Because they're like, look, that name is going to invoke the spirit one way or the other. So, because listen, these cats probably been calling on other names prior and nothing was happening. It was only until they said, we adjure you by Yeshia in whom Paul preached that something finally happened. So that really brought forth the change in which people were looking for. Let's get Acts, the fourth chapter. Acts 4 and 6. We're in the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 6. Read. And Ananias, the high priest of Caliphus, Caiaphas, mm -hmm. and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. So this is the family of the high priest. Okay, come on. Verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have ye done this? So here goes the families of the high priest. Okay. By what power and what name have you done this? See, this has always been a battle within Israel. The name of the Most High. So if people saying, okay, it's 2,000 and a lie, and the name of the Most High is divided, it's always divided. And the greatest Israelite to ever walk the earth, which was Christ, followed by the disciples, wielded that name. And it always invoked some type of what you would call controversy amongst Israelites. Remember, this is the family of the high priest here. So they obviously they was calling on another name other than than Yeshia, other than Ahia. So they're like, by what name are y'all casting these spirits out? Read. Verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them. Said what? Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Elders of where? Of Israel. No, these was Gentiles he was speaking to. And elders of Israel. Now check this out. You cannot gather Israel under multiple names. I don't care what law they're dealing with. I don't care what I don't I don't care what Torah they read and you cannot gather people that call on the name of another God. Okay? Read and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deeds done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and unto all the people of Israel that by the name of Yeshua Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. Remember the guy y'all killed? Y'all said wasn't the one? He revealed to us his father's name was Ahiah. Y'all remember that cat? Read. Whom ye crucified, whom the Most High raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you hold. This is the name we healed in. You want to know what power and what God and what spirit we healed in? That's what we called on. Read. Verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. This was the what? This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. Exactly. This is the stone. This is the rock. Read. Which is become the head of the corner. Which has become the head of the corner. Read. Neither is there salvation in any other. You can't look for no other name. There's no salvation in any other. Read. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Yeah, Shia. End of controversy. End quote. So these were studied men, okay? And one was even the high priest. They understood that in order for great miracles to happen, a person would have to invoke a spirit of some sort by name. See, studied men understand that. They're like, by what name are you doing this? 
okay? They asked by what power or name that, that they had performed this miracle. Peter made it clear. There was only one name that you are to be saved by. While Satan says it doesn't matter, Peter says there's only one. If you need help from a friend, okay, you would need to know the proper phone number. Otherwise, who knows who may pick up, okay? My uh, life and death situation, right? Okay, do, 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 do. Who you calling? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anybody in my phone? <laughs> Anybody. Mm. Yeah, yeah, just pick, just pick a number. Okay, all right, all right, let me see. Jamal. No, 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 he's a crackhead. Don't pick him. That's my cousin. He's on that stuff. No, 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 you said anybody, right? It don't matter, right? It don't matter. No, 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 let me call anybody. He's going to come to your aid. Mm. You need to know whom you're invoking. Okay? Isaiah 52 and 2. Almost finished. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O mm. captive daughter of Zion. Read. For thus saith the Most High, ye have sold yourselves for naught. You have sold yourself for nothing. Read. And ye shall be redeemed without money. And we shall be redeemed without money. Read. For thus saith the most high power. My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Read. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the most high, that my people is taken away for not they that rule over them, make them to howl, saith the most high. And my name continually, every day, is blasphemed. Mm. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, shall they know in that day that I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. It is I. Revelation 3 and 7. Okay. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, come on now, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, read, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For though, for thou hast a little strength, a little strength. And has kept my word. Read. And has not denied my name. Exactly. The church of Philadelphia will never deny his name. Huh. And just like there's a, a, a daughter of Babylon, I really believe we're that spiritual successor, successor of this, the church of Philadelphia. It's not by chance that this place is named Philadelphia and that the church started in Philadelphia. The name of the Most High was revealed in Philadelphia. Uh. And listen, we have to stand pat and stand firm on his name. Read. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. And are not. But do lie. But do what? Do lie. But do lie. Read. Be behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Exactly. Because it's about establishing the name. Okay. And these people out there say that they were the chosen people of Israel, they would have declared his name. Read. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patient, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Mm. Exactly. Which shall come upon all the world. Upon how much? All the world. Read. 
to try them that dwell upon the earth. So it shall come upon all the world. Notice there's two separations here. Right? Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay? Remember, we detailed the earth as those that the Most High were given. Remember when it tell you in the Testament of Reuben, every evil spirit attack of Israel. The Most High will keep his remnant from the hour of temptation. Those that call on his name. All those that dwell within the earth. The time is short, brothers and sisters. So if you weren't sure, make sure you're sure. Certain things that you need to brush up on spiritually, do so. Because if you don't think in the time of need, when the spiritual battle is ahead, the name is not important, then Satan have already won the mind game within your vessel. But as the lessons say, it's time to stop playing Satan's mind games. Embrace the truth and deal with the most high have revealed to you. So beware of Satan's mind games and never let anyone shake you from the doctrine of Christ. Hold fast to the father's name and endure until the end. Shalom. Let's give the most high some worthy praise.